Hi, this is Terry with the Retriever Nation. Many of you that have watched our video on litter pan training have asked where to get the supplies. So in this short video, we'll take a closer look at them and tell just where you can find them. All products will be linked in the description below, but to be compliant with the FTC, we may get a small share of the sale if you purchase through any of the links. One more thing, if you enjoy our content, subscribe. We really do appreciate it. Litter pan training requires only a handful of supplies and works best in an enclosed pen. The gate system we use to create the pen is by North States and is made in the USA. It's sturdy and clicks into multiple angles for any shape of pen you set up. For our size of pen, we use around 10 panels. The crate we use is made by Miller Manufacturing and comes in a couple of sizes. This one is a large and it may seem big at first, but when you have eight or more puppies inside it, large is the perfect size. It cleans well and has a surface that's tough enough to endure chewing from puppy teeth. It has two doors that can swing either way, which is nice, and it easily breaks down into two parts for storage. The litter pan tray is simply a wash machine drip pan that measures approximately 28 by 30 inches. If space allows, I'd suggest two. Potties and poopies grow as fast as the puppies, but if you have room for only one, you'll just need to scoop alfalfa more frequently. The alfalfa pellets come in 40 pound bags at a cost of about $20 each. I'll link a couple of different brands. We've been asked if wood chips work, and my answer is I think alfalfa is your best bet. It's the closest thing to outdoor grass, which is where you're ultimately teaching them to go. Also, in case of an accidental ingestion, alfalfa just passes through. Wood chips do not. Obviously, you'll need a scooper, garbage can, and bags nearby. I like to buy citrus-scented garbage bags. I continue using pads from the whelping box. They're absorbent, washable, and also show wet spots, which help me gauge progress. You'll be washing these frequently, so it's good to have a couple sets. You can also use indoor-outdoor carpet like this. It has great traction for puppies learning to walk and run, and by cutting a piece in two, it easily fits in the wash machine. Disposable pads are initially placed just outside of the crate. I transfer lightly soiled ones into the trays. It helps establish scent and tells the puppies that is where they should be going. I think this is a critical step. You won't need them too long. By week six, the puppies begin to play with them, and it's time to be done, so a pack of 20 or 30 in size medium will do. Get a high-quality spray bottle and some sort of mop. I just use a Swiffer dry mop and wrap old washcloths around and rewash them. For cleaner, chlorhexidine solution is my cleaner of choice. It's antibacterial, 100% safe for pets and people, and is made in the USA. A container of this will last forever. The mixing ratio is two tablespoons of chlorhexidine to a gallon of water. Store this in an empty milk gallon and use that to fill your spray bottle. But what would all this training be without some fun and reward? Buckets, bowls, and toys keep puppies engaged and happy. And a happy puppy is a trainable puppy. And there you have it. That's all you need for successful litter pan training. If you need a refresher on how to litter pan train, I'll attach it here. Happy training, and thanks for watching The Retriever Nation.